So Mac gaming is in a bit of a weird state at the moment. Yes, there are an unprecedented number of natively optimized Apple Silicon Mac games being released right now. And we have some really cool AAA Mac titles to look forward to like Death Stranding and Assassin's Creed Mirage. But in reality, having a handful of ports of frankly quite old games being brought to the Mac isn't good enough. After all, it's hard to get excited about the lag between releases. For example, Resident Evil 4 Remake just came out on Mac and it works wonderfully even on the base M1 chip. I'll be making a video about it very soon. But Resident Evil 4 first came out nearly nine months ago back in March and the upcoming Mac port of Death Stranding comes over four years after its original release and it was even released free on PC on the Epic Game Store earlier this year. And if Apple wants Mac gaming to be taken seriously, then it needs to figure out a way to get far more interesting interesting big budget triple A single player and multiplayer games to come to the platform at a much higher pace. But if you don't want to wait for these games to come to Mac, then I don't blame you. That's why I want to let you in on a little secret. Yes, my YouTube channel is all about Mac gaming, but my main computer is actually a PC running Windows. And in reality, if you love games, then you can play virtually every game on a PC far better than on a Mac for less money without waiting for ports to be released. And unlike on a Mac, you can play popular online games like The Finals and never have to worry about DRM or anti-cheat or translation layers ever again. So that's why I recommend going to your Mac, opening up Safari, following the link in the description and visiting the sponsor of today's video, Jawa, to get yourself the best value gaming PC that money can buy. So if you haven't heard of Jawa, this is a PC gaming marketplace for gamers by gamers. On this site, you can get connected to an individually curated group of verified sellers that deliver amazing value for completed gaming PC builds at some of the best prices on the internet. Skip the hassle of researching, buying and building a gaming PC for yourself. Let one of Jawa's verified sellers build one for you. And the prices that you're gonna get on Jawa are not too bad at all. For example, take a look at this PC Arctic Beast, a beautiful all white RGB'd up to the hilt, high airflow case with liquid cooling, complete with an RTX 4060 GPU, an AMD Ryzen 5 5600X, 32 gigabytes of RAM, two terabytes of solid state storage space, and a huge 700 watt power supply. You can count on this seller's 14 five star reviews on the website right now, or pick from dozens of other PC builders on Jawa. So make sure to visit the link in the description to support my YouTube channel and get yourself the best possible gaming experience using one of Jawa's gaming PCs. And Mac gaming's real problem is the classic chicken and egg situation. Gamers won't buy Macs because there aren't enough games on Mac and developers won't release games onto Mac because there aren't enough Mac gamers. And so the cycle continues no matter how hard Apple tries to fix it. And the problem isn't Mac hardware. Unlike in the dark days of the Intel era, the new Apple Silicon Macs now have efficient and powerful integrated graphics chips. And even the fanless M1 MacBook Air is more than capable of running optimized AAA titles like Resident Evil Village and No Man's Sky. And one might think that the issue is with Mac software. One difficulty developers face is transitioning their games from the the x86 architecture used on Xbox, PlayStation and PC to the ARM architecture. Another issue is developers are forced to use Apple's proprietary graphics API called Metal and Apple's lack of support for open standards like Vulkan or an up-to-date version of OpenGL makes porting to macOS substantially more difficult than it needs to be. However, technical issues aren't really what's stopping Mac games from being developed. After all, the Nintendo Switch uses a relatively underpowered ARM SoC with non-standard controls, but it is one of the most successful games consoles of all time with tons of excellent first party Nintendo games and a very healthy third party game library as well. This shows that developers are happy to jump through any kind of technical hoops to port their games to the Nintendo Switch because they know they're going to reach the large market of Switch gamers who are going to buy their game in droves. And porting difficulties aren't the real reason why games aren't being ported to Mac. To prove this we just have to look at Apple's other biggest and most profitable gaming platform earning more money than Microsoft, Sony and Nintendo combined and that is the iPhone. And the thing is that iPhone and Apple Silicon Mac chips are now fully compatible. And this means that every single iPhone game could easily work on a Mac with virtually zero work. The only thing that Activision needs to do to bring Call of Duty Mobile, for example, to the Mac is just tick the box and boom, Mac port is done. So ready to go Mac ports like Genshin Impact, Call of Duty Mobile, etc. just don't happen on the Mac because companies don't want to invest the resources that would make this port happen. On a basic level, you need to add keyboard, mouse and trackpad support. You'd need to test it on several Apple Silicon Macs and you need to build a team which offers customer service support. And you'd also have to develop more resources for anti-cheat because macOS is a more open platform than iOS. And at the end of the day, the reason that this doesn't happen is because there just aren't enough Mac gamers to make all of this worthwhile. 
not. And Apple have recognized the issue and they have some real strategies to try and break the cycle and get more Mac games and Mac gamers onto their platform. One big strategy involves paying a handful of developers to bring their games to Mac, parading games like Resident Evil Village and Death Stranding on stage for some free advertising, investing funds into Apple Arcade where some decent mid-budget type Mac games have come out. But really this is a far cry from what core gamers are really looking for, popular AAA single and multiplayer titles. And one really positive step that Apple have taken is the creation of the Game Porting Toolkit, which is Apple's developer tool designed to make it easier than ever to convert games from console and Windows Direct X onto Apple's proprietary graphics API and provide a path to get these optimized for the Apple Silicon ARM chip. But if you've been following this YouTube channel, then you'll know that we've been using a tool called Crossover and combined with D3D Metal from Game Porting Toolkit, we're able to run many Direct X 11 and 12 games like Cyberpunk 2077, Hogwarts Legacy, Diablo 4, on the Apple Silicon Mac using this translation layer. But the original idea behind this was to show that developers can run their existing game through the game porting toolkit, see, yes, it is possible to get this game working on a Mac and using Apple's tools like the Metal Shader Converter, put these onto the Apple Silicon Mac natively and optimize them for Metal and the ARM chip. And because Apple's game porting toolkit and all the support that Apple provide are gonna make this process easier, game developers and publishers are gonna think twice before writing the Mac off as a gaming platform and they're going to invest money and time into releasing proper Mac ports. So unfortunately I'm not sure that this strategy is going to work. So as far as I know as of right now it's only been six months since the announcement of the game porting toolkit but I haven't heard of any announcements or any projects that have been worked on apart from the ones that Apple have clearly paid for and had featured on their keynotes. And next even if developers do find an easy way to port their games using these new tools they're still going to be in the same situation as Call of Duty Mobile and Game Engine impact. They're going to take one look at the player base and the amount of revenue they're going to get back and they're just going to say no this is just not worth it. The only real way this is going to happen is if Apple knocks on the door and hands them a big bag of money and unfortunately money can only take you so far. What Apple really needs is game developers to see the Mac as an actual desirable place to publish and support their games. What Apple needs is a radically different strategy and for this we need only look at the success of another very similar project the Steam Deck from Valve. The fact is that Mac Gaming and the Steam Deck share a huge amount in common. Both platforms run non-Windows operating systems. The Mac uses macOS and the Steam Deck uses SteamOS, a form of Linux. Both platforms seek to gain a market share by encouraging developers to make their games playable on their hardware. But the difference with the Steam Deck is that Valve doesn't really care about native SteamOS games. They already saw the strategy fail when they tried it the first time with the original release of the Steam Machine in 2014. And a big reason for this was that the Steam Machine could only run a tiny limited number of Linux games. None of the most popular Windows games could work on the Steam Machine. In 2022 Valve turned the strategy on its head with the Steam Deck by creating a new way of playing the most popular Windows games on their hardware which didn't require a developer to actually port the game. Instead the game could be run using a technology called Proton, an open source implementation of Wine developed by Valve and Codeweavers. This meant that many Windows games didn't even require any work to get them playable on the Steam Deck and on Steam OS. Proton would handle all of the heavy lifting and developers might have to make minor tweaks to their games to make them Proton compatible but as long as they ran well on the Steam Deck then gamers were happy. And Valve were more than content with the situation. If a Windows game worked on the Steam Deck they would happily slap on a deck ready sticker even though there was zero native Steam OS compatibility and it was all running through the Proton translation layer. Now what Apple needs to do is to take the lessons from Valve and their mistakes with the Steam machines and their success with the Steam Deck and apply it to Mac gaming. And what's so painful is that Apple are already so so close to getting this right. So you might think that copying the Steam Deck strategy is very un-Apple like. However, Apple have already done many of the steps that the Steam Deck has already taken. For example, Apple already created a translation layer and this is called Rosetta 2. This translates x86 code into ARM on the fly. This meant that when the M1 Max first released in 2020, most third-party software still ran on Intel binaries through Rosetta 2. It's only years later that most Mac apps now are native ARM and this is all thanks to that grace period that Rosetta 2 provided, taking away all of the pain of forcing customers to switch to a new CPU architecture. Can you imagine what the release of the M1 Mac would have been like if we didn't have Rosetta 2? Secondly, Apple created D3D Metal and Game Porting Toolkit to run DirectX 12 games on the Mac even though that wasn't its original purpose. And D3D Metal has remarkable similarities with Proton. Both tools use open source Wine as its base and both partner with Codeweavers, the main contributors to 
Mr. Wine and the creator of Crossover. And yes, the original reason for creating Game Porting Toolkit was to encourage developers to port their games to Mac natively. It was never meant to be used to actually play games through. However, Apple can take this existing work just a couple of tiny steps further in order to make Mac gaming successful. Firstly, in order to make more Mac games available, Apple needs to take the job of game porting out of the reluctant developer's hand and give them to the open source community. Right now, D3D Metal has a closed restrictive license. This means that you can't make a Mac port by bundling D3D Metal and Wine and sell it. This is nonsense. Just open up D3D Metal's licensing and let developers sell it with their games and make it as easy as possible to release games on macOS. And if you think that Apple wouldn't do something like this, then you only need to look back and see that Apple have already opened up the licensing of D3D Metal a little bit due to backlash. And this allowed D3D Metal to be included in projects like Crossover. It just needs to be taken a little step further. Secondly, D3D Metal needs to be open source completely. Right now, we are relying on Apple to update Game Porting Toolkit behind closed doors. They don't even provide change logs. Imagine what could be achieved if Apple and Codeweavers worked together with the full weight of the open source community. Windows gaming on a Mac would be completely transformed. Workarounds could be implemented, bugs could be fixed instantly, dozens of projects would spring up overnight, and we could have thousands more games becoming playable on the Mac with compatibility similar to that of Proton and the Steam Deck. Once there are way more Mac games playable, then gamers would finally buy Macs for gaming, and this would finally solve the Mac gaming chicken and egg problem. Now for Apple, there are a couple of disadvantages to this strategy. Open sourcing D3D Metal would discourage native Metal and native ARM macOS game development. After all, why learn Metal when you could just code a game in DirectX and use the translation layer instead. And furthermore, using this method would make it harder for Mac games to be ported to the more profitable ecosystems of the iPhone and iPad. And this would go against Apple's strategy of unifying all of these ecosystems. However, I think that overall, open sourcing D3D Metal would be a net benefit for Apple and Mac gaming. If there are more Mac games, then more gamers would buy Macs, and then more developers would release Mac games. And ironically, if developers realize that they could make their games run better on a Mac by making a fully native version, then they'll do this once they see that there's an actual viable Mac gaming user base. So anyway, that's how I think that Apple can finally fix Mac gaming. I hope you found this video interesting. I know that's going to be a controversial topic. However, if you have any thoughts, then please make sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.